Hello there, RJB here. And before we start with the video today, I wanted to make a short um, little statement about an issue that has been troubling me for a little over two months now, but has uh, this week, over the past week, um, grown bigger and has gone to a certain degree public. So back in December, a certain person I used to work together with, who is from Korea and is very bad at English and who relies on using a translator tool, had a couple misunderstandings about things we talked about. These misunderstandings have led to uh, him spreading basically lies amongst other content producers that I also work with. I'm not going to call any names because I don't think calling names is the correct thing to do. I think keeping this mostly private is the best thing to do. But one of these people he has shared these lies with has gone out of their way to make public statements about me that are more or less false, they're lies, that they do hurt my reputation significantly. Because this person is also not giving me the chance to defend myself, because I have been banned by this person from a lot of servers, a lot of channels, a lot of streams. So there's very little room for me to defend myself. Now this person in particular, I've managed to reach out to this person, and I've managed to clear up all the lies and misunderstandings with this person. However, the story itself still lives. And that's just something I wanted to get off my chest. Because this has been killing my motivation to make videos. I'm still going to keep making videos. But it has really hurt my motivation because I've put... Maybe a hundred hours, a thousand hours, I mean, into casting, and I've maybe put over thousands of dollars into this entire thing, because this is my passion. So yeah, that aside though, um, that's all I wanted to say, and I want to focus on the match, and I want to focus on just casting a fun game instead of bringing you bad news and sad news, because that's not why we're here. We're here to be entertained. We're here to have ourselves some fun. And it's also what I want to focus on. To enjoy myself and be distracted from that horror story that is haunting me. So today we have a return of Rabbit against 458. In the most recent video, someone was kind of upset that a certain person, I'm not going to spoil the results of the previous video, but that someone in the previous video didn't win the match. So I thought to myself, you know what, let's give these two players another chance to show us, or well, to show this person in particular, that things can and usually do go different from what we saw last time. We've got Rabbit here on the Yellow Terran under the name Yang Shigi Sunyun against 458 here on the top left of the map under the Magenta Rodos color. Speed up the first two minutes a little bit because there's not much happening at the moment. Oh, they're talking about doing a best of seven. They indicate that with a seven slash four. Most of his foreigners, we say um, a B, an O, and then a number. The Koreans, they only use the numbers and a slash to indicate that they want to do a best of seven or a best of whatever, a best of three, best of five. That is the way they say it. So we've got a very early command center coming out here from Rabbit at three barracks is there in the front. And we have an early choke build order. They are coming in from 458. He went for a pylon, a nexus, a forge, a choke, a gateway, and now a cybercord in the back as well after he made those two cannons. So he's pretty much safe from any aggression that Rabbit can probably throw at him. Rabbit there is kind of the middle just to see if there's something there. There's nothing there to be seen. He has been found already by a probe, but the probe I think has died. 
So 4 of 8 knows where Rabbit is, and Rabbit knows where 4 of 5 8 is. Curious to see what's gonna happen with this very early command center that came out from Rabbit. He also has an academy already on the way, so Medic should soon be coming into the mix alongside with Stim Upgrade, because that is always the first thing that players go for, because they want to try to break through these cannons in the front. Very early robotics facility are coming out from 458 after the Cyber Core. Only a single robotics for now. There's a Citadel of Doom there in the back as well. Now this can lead us into a lot of different things. One of the things, of course, is Double Reaver. Because he might add on a second robotics. Which he is. That's going to be a second robotics there soon. Anytime. There it is. So usually this means he's going for one shuttle and two Reavers. Because this robot will finish, then the shuttle will be put into production, and the shuttle will finish right about the time that this second robotics facility finishes itself, and then he can queue up two reavers at the same time. And he's also going for zealot speed, and that most certainly, most certainly confirms what I was thinking. Support right there coming up in the back, so we can make the reavers. He's got a zealot on the way as well. Slowly bottling up the Zealots, but now he's only got two cannons in the front there and three Zealots. And there's a lot of Marines here in the front, though he's trying to reduce the number of Marines just a little bit. But Rabbit keeps most of his Marines alive, loses only a single one. One Zealot goes down as well. Now more Marines are arriving on the scene, and he's got medics queued up as well, just finishing up, walking across the map already. Two Starports there on the way in the back to make raids against shuttles. This is going to be a very shuttle-dominant game from 458. There's no siege mode or tank on the way. Now it is. Just as I mentioned it, it is on the way. Shalot is finished. He's gonna fly some zealots over across the map because he knows he can't walk through this. But honestly, removing those zealots from the equation here in the choke point might expose him to a marine push because that's definitely what I believe Rabbit is gonna go for. But this shuttle here with the four zealots might just distract him for long enough. It might just distract him for long enough, but he might also try to break through at the same time. Though the Zealot's now back at home, going in for the attack. We've got Zealots here, trying to bait those Marines in. The Marines here at the back, back at home, are defending. There's a tank there as well. The Zealots were already on low HP, but they can't really defend all that much. And he goes in for the attack, breaks through the cannons. The shuttle arrives just back at home. The Reavers are under production, but the Reavers have not yet been targeted. The Reavers are targeting. Ooh, the Reavers have just finished their Scarabs just in time. Just in time. Those, both those Reavers could have gone down if the Scarabs hadn't finished just then. So the timing works out exactly right. Or 4, 5, 8, or maybe a Rabbit waited for just a little bit too long. But of course, Rabbit didn't know that the Zealots were there until they showed themselves in his space. And now Rabbit is looking at a pretty difficult situation because he's got to fight against the shuttle with Reavers while having pretty much nothing at all back at home except those three raids, which come in just in time to take down the shuttle. Both Reavers are on low, but the Reavers there can't fight back against the raids. Zealots in the front are still fighting. Reavers are crawling forward, getting closer. There's a tank in the back there as well, taking it down. And in the end, neither of the two players take any significant damage. But it was closer. It was closer than the amount of damage they received would indicate, because that was as close as it could be. If anything had gone wrong for either of these two players, it could have spelled the end of the game, or a loss of a lot of workers, a lot of structures, or a lot of units. But right now, we're looking at something that is somewhat even. Both players lost their investment, both players gained nothing from their investment, but the situation is better for the Terran than it is for the Protoss, because the Terran has bought themselves some time and has grown a little bit stronger. Shola comes in from the top side there, but flies straight into the race. The Reaver unloads, Reaver crosses forward. Reaver's gonna try to get a shot off on the SCVs there. He gets a shot off, kills... Well, only a single SCV. All the other SCVs were on the other side, so still on 49 against 50. A couple of cells there are walking through the front. Dealing some damage, killed the depot, killed some marines. But the raids there, once again, save the day, save. Prevent any damage. Now we've got Dragoons on the way from 458 here because he knows that the choke is wide open. And he knows that shuttles don't do much against raids. Dragoons, however, Dragoons, they do a lot against raids. So those Dragoons are a really great switch up. They're a really great mix up to go for because he has a great chance of breaking through the front and killing those raids. And there's a lot of money in those raids. A lot of the money Rabbit has went into those raids. He's trying to play catch-up though, because he's adding on a third command center to boost his economy up a little bit more. 
already on the same amount of workers as 458 is. 458 has all the forges on the way now as well to get all the upgrades he needs. He's got, I think as well, observers on the way just in case those raids have cloak. And those raids do have cloak on the way. So 458 will be able to still detect those raids once the Dragoons come in for the attack. There's a tank here behind the wall. The wall has been fortified and the Perkins are all filled up. So he might not even be able to break through. Although there's only a one, one tank and only about 8 units in those bunkers. And he's coming in hot. There's Reavers there as well. Reavers are firing on the bunker. Bunker goes down. Wall goes down as well. But a lot of units have gone down as well. But now the raids are coming in hot. Taking down the shuttle. Going to take down the Reavers as well. Reavers have gone down. Now the last couple of Dragoons and Zelda are trying to break through. But not going to succeed whatsoever. So all he does is kill some bunkers, kill some units in those bunkers, and kill some depots. And as a result, Rabbit is currently supply blocked. So he's gonna be stuck on this supply size for a little while, while 4 of 8 is gonna grow bigger and a little bit bigger. But the downside for 4 of 8 is that Rabbit is gonna build up a small bank in the meantime. He's gonna build up a small little bank and grow a little bit more comfortable then have more minerals to spend on factories and defenses and turrets on the sides. Whereas 4 of 8 is forced to go to back to the drawing board and formulate another attack to harm Rabbit with. But oh, he flies straight into some Dragoon, so he gets spotted out there, but the cloak comes in hot just at the right time. Prevents any significant damage, although this one right there is not protected. Tanks up on the hill coming here as well. There's an observer here for the raids, they're in the front. The goons on the side are stopping and denying the side vision. The raids were on the hunt for the shuttles back at home here in Port of Eight's base, but the Dragoons intercepting the raids, of course, prevented some damage to those shuttles. But a shuttle drop doesn't get denied back at home, it will get the chance to go in for the attack. Rabbit is growing big pretty quick. He's growing big pretty quick. That very early extra command center really helping him out with growing bigger and richer faster than he usually would. Got armor upgrades and weapon upgrades for his tanks on the way as well. He's getting cloak energy or wraith energy as well. That's something we don't often see. Or maybe oh, it's vessel energy. Usually we see EMP first, but he's going for vessel energy instead of EMP first. It doesn't even have a vessel itself yet. That's interesting. That's interesting. He's mixing up the order for whatever reason he believes is a good reason. And honestly, I do kind of tend to agree with Rabbit because he's a smart player and knows exactly what to do. So whatever he does, usually it's a good thing. A lot of shuttles here in the front being prepared to get loaded up. A lot of zealots and templars as well. He's going back to a mass drop playstyle. He's taking a lot of time though, he has a lot of stargates here on the side as well, so quite a low gateway count. But he's definitely going to switch over into carriers, because that is something Porvivate loves to do when he makes this many stargates. But first he needs Corsairs, because the Corsairs are great in fighting against Valkyries and Raids. That's something they are absolutely great at. The Valkyries have not yet been spotted by 458, so he doesn't yet know that they're there. And the Valkyries might just shut down this shuttle Corsair drop before he can properly respond to it. More Valkyries are spawning at the same time as well. Oh, he has to, he's forced to unload it on the top side. He's starting to unload. A lot of the shuttles will go down before everything is unloaded, but he does manage to unload a lot of units there on the top side. Gets a beautiful storm up there on the tanks. It's gonna advance closer and closer to the STPs there, but now Rabbit goes straight for the Templars. Gonna try to take him down. He storms on the command center. He misses the mineral patch. So there's a little thing here. If you storm on the hatchery as Protoss, you kill the drones. But if you storm on a Nexus or a command center, the workers right next to it or below it stay alive. So that was closer than it appeared. Because if he clicks a little bit lower, well, he would have to walk forward like another second more. And the Templar might have died before he could storm. But that was very close. He could have stormed and killed a lot of SCVs, but he was just short of it. Shuttle tries to break through. Shuttle goes in. Shuttle has zealots in there. It's going to try to unload the zealots on top of the SCVs there. So maybe the tank will shoot on its own SCVs because it's hitting the zealot. But nope, they're not going to get any SCP kills there. As the tanks are coming closer, he's going to try to do it though. No, he wasn't going to try to do it. So yeah, Rabbit is playing a pretty good defense here and 458 just can't seem to 
really break in there. He managed to get some units in there, but the units that do get in there, they don't get much done. The upgrade's currently on 1 1 there for the tanks, soon to be on 2 2. Air upgrade's also on the way there for those raids and Valkyries, although I do think the raids are getting replaced by Valkyries because Valkyries are just more reliant in taking down large groups of air units. So that's another on the top side out of the range of those Valkyries. Oh, he's gonna fly around the Valkyries, but he fails to do so. Most of the Valkyries do go, most of the shuttles do go. Oh, a Templar rides right on the scene. Templar storm, Templar. How many kills does the Templar get? Because 13 kills, not the amount of kills. Oh, he got even. Oh, Rabbit made a big, big mistake there. Went back to the SCP patch, the mineral patch, a little bit too early. And 458 manages to get 32 SCP kills there in the end, after all. Rabbit was close to preventing as much damage as he could, but he took way more than he should. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. And it all went wrong. So now 458 has a pretty good shot at making the future moves he's gonna make count. Because right now, he's in the lead. And all he has to do is keep up the pressure. Break open a hole somewhere, either in the front, although that is looking impossible. Because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 depots there in total. So he's gonna have to go for the sides. But the sides are pretty well protected by these buildings flying, giving vision. There's turrets here, turrets there. There's Valkyries at somewhat of a neutral position here, where they can fly either to the bottom right or the top left. Borvade, though, chooses the same side once again, starts along the top of the turrets. Most of the shuttles completely and fully unload. There's so many zealots here in the base and temples as well. Gonna take down those turrets and gonna try to kill units left and right, while Rabbit is still trying to recover from that earlier SCV hit on his minerals. He still has two temples there left in the top side. Zealots are running in first to break open the path. Templars crawling forward, has a storm. Storms on some tanks, one more storm there in the back. Gonna try to crawl forward, but he can't reach, so he just decides to storm on the Valkyries instead to at least get something done and maybe make the follow-up drop easier than if he hadn't done that. So a lot of dead units for both players, but a lot of ground gained there for 458, while also building cannons on the middle to function as somewhat of a barrier or a hurdle for 4 or Rabbit to overcome when he wants to break free. But I don't think he's going to try to break free anytime soon because he's currently at a 36 supply deficit compared to 458. And 458 is now mixing it up, coming in from the bottom right. Not what Rabbit was expecting. All this Valkyries on the top side is going to fly straight towards those SCVs there. Rabbit is not yet responding. Rabbit is responding. SCVs are running this safety. Are there Templars in the mix? There's a Templar in the mix. Templar is going to storm. Templar storm. Templar hits 6. He hits 6. So only a single Templar there manages to achieve something. And even though he got in there clean without any resistance he gets the least the least he could possibly oh no there's one more storm there in the mix and he kills i think another 20 so that's about 26 scps dead and gone four of eight tricked us all i mean maybe you knew there was still a templar in the shuttle but he tricked me and he tricked rabbit as well and he does get a beautiful storm up there on the scps after all and now the game has become even harder than before for a rabbit this rabbit's Valkyrie count has gone down. Oh, what? Another storm inside the shuttle. Oh no, this is disastrous. The shuttle was still there below the minimap, and there was still a Templar inside that shuttle. And it just so happens that Rabbit loses another 20 of his SCVs. So the game has gone from bad to worse to the worst possible situation you can possibly imagine for Rabbit. As he's down 47 supply, he's down 50 workers, well 48 to be exact, but that's a lot of workers to be down, that's a lot of workers to be down. Well now an attack there comes out in the front, the wall got taken down, now Zelsa are holding the top of the tanks, the tanks are gonna get taken down, he throws down the defensive matrix, there's Templars in the mix there as well to throw down some storms, the Valkyries get taken down by the Corsairs, Valkyries are running away, units coming from the back to the front to help defend the frontal portion there, but these Zelots are in a very, very high amount, and they're gonna try to break through as best he can, the drop comes in to take them as well from the top side there, Valkyries try to intercept there, but the shuttles are gonna fly all the way, shuttles are arriving on the scene, shuttles are unloading, shuttles are gonna storm, storming on the SCVs there, but he gets almost no SV kills there, Great, great little bit of dodging there for a rabbit. He also makes sure to kill the shuttle there on the bottom side before he puts his workers back on the minerals. But the frontal portion of his base is still getting seized. He's still under attack. There's a couple of tanks here hidden and 
hiding behind the factories, but they're too far away to prevent these Dragoons and Zealots from taking down the turret on the side, who is taking even more material damage. He's taking even more material damage, and there's not much he can do against it. Not much he can do against it. Another mass drop here back at home being prepared. A lot of shuttles, Corsairs as well. He wants to really kill the last remaining couple of Valkyries. He doesn't have anything in production really at the moment except some Goliaths. Goliaths are cheap, cheaper than tanks, cheaper than Valkyries, and they are pretty strong if you already have a lot of tanks. Well, if you already have a lot of tanks, Goliaths are a great option, and they are also great against air. And he's getting Terran boosters for his Goliaths to make sure that he can snipe those shuttles as they come flying in using those Goliaths. But the shuttles there are coming in, starts to unload on top of all the units here, starts to unload there, and now it's going to fly straight towards the SCVs there are in the back. Zealot's on top of the SCVs there, he's unseizing his tanks immediately to prevent splash damage on his SCVs there, but now his Valkyries are getting taken down there by the Corsairs. Corsairs do go down first though, but that's once again a lot of damage there on the Corsairs. This is starting to look worse and worse for Rabbit. Rabbit is playing... 4th of 8 is playing a really, really solid match here. This is really solid Protoss. A rinse and repeat method, but a very great target selection. Great mix-ups, great coordination. And Rabbit is being pushed to his limits. I really needed a drink there. I really needed a drink. So he's got two drops prepared at the same time. One from the top left, one from the bottom right. Which one is going to go in first? An attack from the front as well. It's small, but it's enough to distract. Also, another shuttle there still in the base, distracting Pison from the bottom right. Does get intercepted. Starts to unload. Temper on the scene. Temper storms. SVs are running away, but all the SVs get caught up in the storms. Another drop there comes in from the top side. And another storm on the remaining SVs there. And he kills pretty much everything there is. There's 14 SCPs left and 8 minerals. <laughs> He's pretty much already dead. He is pretty much already dead. This game for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm praying, I'm praying that Rabbit can make a comeback here, but things are looking exceptionally bad. He's below 100 supply. He does have some good upgrades there, level 2 armor, level 3 attack on those tanks, and the air is currently on level 1-2. But those Dragoons are on 2-3-2, max out shields, 2 armor, 2 weapon, and soon to be on two armor, uh, 3 armor, 3 weapon. Shuttle drop there comes in from the right of the base. Rest of the base, Goliath is trying to intercept, but there's too many shuttles. And it's all just Zealots. Straight delivery on top of those units. Some of the Goliaths go down, but the Zealots don't achieve much. But they are enough to distract and open up a hole in the front here for the other units to come in from the top side and attack these tanks and clear out those tanks. Because those tanks are currently the most important defensive thing against ground units that Rabbit has. Shuttles coming in once again. Once again, unloading everywhere on top of those units. There might be Templars in there as well. No Templars. Once again, just unloading straight on top of those units behind the wall. There's a Templar there in the mix. Templar crawls closer. Templar gets taken down. But now the wounds are coming in from the front. There's an Observer there as well, just in case that there are raids. 458's pressure is... It's... Like, you're not allowed to breathe. You're not allowed to breathe. It's asphyxiating. Asphyxiating. It's like a stranglehold that Rabbit is not allowed to leave, ever. And every little movement that Rabbit makes, every single attack that 458 throws out at Rabbit, just makes the stranglehold stronger, makes it tighter. And very soon, Rabbit will be close to fainting due to a lack of oxygen. This is becoming more constricting by the minute. He's now in 45 SCVs though, but his army is still very, very small. He has just managed to pass 100 supply, now 110. 458 has 76 workers and a lot of supplies, pretty much maxed out. He's sending out another attack of mass salad, some dragoons as well, and five shuttles loaded up with units, ready to unload either on the tanks, on the SCVs. He pretty much has Wherever he wants to unload those zealots or those shuttles, he can do it. He's got the freedom, there's nothing holding him back. Starts to unload there right next to the commands. It gets taken down by a couple of Valkyries, so, but the Templar there arrives on the scene. Two Templars actually. They get a lot of storms down there, but almost no SV kills. Kills almost only four or five SVs in total. 
But all the units have been taken down. He's also taken down depots, structures, factories. Getting a top of the tanks in the back there as well. Defensive Matrix trying to keep him alive. But oh, the tank goes down. Well, another tank goes down. Are there any tanks left? I don't see any tanks. And Rabbit knows it's over. And he calls it GG after 23 minutes of excruciating torture. And great, great Protoss gameplay there from 458. Didn't have to go for carriers, just had to go for a very precise and smart rinse and repeat. Send in a shuttle drop, try to hit the minerals, and if you can't hit the minerals, just unload anywhere inside of rapid space and kill stuff. And mix it up with some frontal attacks, attacks from the left side, the right side, the top side. Just kept mixing it up with very smart target selection, very smart approaches, and the execution of the attacks was also top notch. But that's it for today. This is Rabbit Against 458. Um, how you call it? A rematch, basically. A rematch. Between Rabbit and 458. And 458 comes out on top convincingly. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And I hope you come back for more sometime this week. Or sometime in the future. See you next time. See you next time.